our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of a great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the time of teacher that I may know how to sustain weary with the word. Morning by morning he awakens. Awakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out me. I did not hide my face from the insulting and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is me. Who will contend with me? Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together, who are my advisors. Let us let them come to me. It is the Lord of God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Our song for today is the Psalms 118. Let us say together responsibly the whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will end them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. He leads with righteous and I will give thanks to you for the age of me and have become my salvation. The same son which the builders rejected. As the this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in Him. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna! The Lord send us the now success. Bless us, the Chief, who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession of branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of his God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born of the human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and through every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the God, the Father. The word of the Lord.
This prayer comes from the 31st Psalm, an evening prayer. Some theologians believe that this prayer may have been, have been a bedtime prayer for Hebrew children and their parents, similar to what we've been used to praying if we die before we wait, we pray the Lord our soul to take. The rest of the, of the prayer is, You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. This is such a beautiful prayer, a prayer of Jesus relinquishing his life to his Father. Another way that we are to model Christ. The next thing is the word paradise, which only appears three times in the whole New Testament. Here in 2 Corinthians and in Revelation. The Greek word means garden. This garden appears to be God's garden. An image of the new creation at the end of time. The mention of paradise comes up in an exchange between Jesus and the other two condemned men. One of the men mocks Jesus, but the other wants to be remembered by Jesus when he enters the kingdom. Jesus told this man, truly I tell you, you will be with me in paradise, in God's garden. Christians have found tremendous hope from this verse. Our hope is that one day we also will be with Jesus in his garden. Another unique gift from, the, from Luke's passion is that only Luke records the Roman centurion saying, certainly this man was innocent. Some of us may be waiting to, expecting to hear truly this man is God's son, which is what Matthew and Mark report here. However, Luke declares a truth that both Rome and Jerusalem would have ignored otherwise. Jesus is innocent. He has done nothing wrong. An innocent man is killed. And this is what Luke wants us to look at when we see the cross. He wants us to remember the injustice that was done to Jesus. So today, another Holy Week begins. Some of you have seen a number of Holy Weeks, but let me challenge you to see this Holy Week with new, fresh eyes. We will walk alongside Jesus this week. Today we accompanied him in triumph, in triumphant into, into Jerusalem, riding a donkey to the shouts, Hosanna, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah. On Monday, you can reflect on how Jesus walked into the Jerusalem temple, overturned tables where money was being exchanged. On Tuesday, you're taught that Jesus taught in parables, warning the people against the Pharisees and predicting the destruction of the temple. We know a little about Wednesday. I like to think maybe he might have got some rest. Thursday evening, we will come together here to join Jesus in the upper room to celebrate the events of the Last Supper, the foot washing, and the institution of the Holy Eucharist. Later that evening, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed about what lay ahead of him. On Good Friday, we walked beside Jesus in, in his, to his crucifixion. We will come together in a bare church with all the Christian symbols and covers and things removed, everything gone. When we depart Friday evening, we leave our Christ lying in the tomb, where he remains on Saturday. However, when we return for Easter Sunday, the Christian Passover, we will see that the stone will have been removed and we celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. During Holy Week, we, the believers, participate in the dying and rising again of Jesus. As Jesus passes from death to life, we also pass from death into life and share his victory over death. Every Holy Week, we are born anew as we celebrate the Paschal Mystery, which incorporates us into everlasting life with Christ.
Now, let us hear the story of our salvation as told again in the Gospel of Luke. Um, the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute arose among, those, among them as to whom it could be. Which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest? But he said to them, The king, kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to ship all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock crop will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know him. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandwich, did you like anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted amongst the laws. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, 
and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said no more of this, and he touched the ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was standing, the cock crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy? Who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of Man? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, the king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowd, I find no basis for accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea and from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. When he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him, and was hoping to see him perform some sign. 
He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then they put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed him again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that the demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus <clears throat> over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bore, and the beasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cost cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept riding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the others rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light faded, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the 
centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of, of Arachnia, and he was expecting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Please remain standing for the prayer of the people. Loving God, through the passion of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have poured out your divine life and love for us, despite our evil. Strengthen us to take up our cross and to follow in his way, that we may share in your redeeming work as we pray. We have trusted in you, O oh God. We have said, you are our God. Amen. You have called your church to be the community of the crucified one, of gracious one. Help us to walk in Christ's path of obedient humility, that we may be willing to suffer for the sake of your goodness. We have trusted in you, O oh God. We have said you are our God. In Christ's exaltation upon the cross, you have made a mockery of the pretensions of the rulers and authorities of the world, Almighty One. Grant to all leaders the strength to walk in your way of humble service, that we may be saved from all tyranny and oppression. We have, we have trusted in you, O oh God. We, we have, have said that you are our God. God. Compassionate one. Bring to your care all those whose lives are wasted with grief and their years are signed, as we pray for all who suffer throughout the world. We have trusted in you, O oh God. We have said that you are our God. Our times are in your hands, and you sustain the weary with the word, our loving God. Uphold all in our community who endure the shame or threat, that they may turn to the cross and be comforted. We have trusted in you, O God. We have said that you are God. We pray for those among us who need your saving help, especially those we name now. <coughs> We give you thanks for pouring your divine life into our lives as we offer our gratefulness and thanksgiving, especially for We pray for all who have followed Christ along the human journey into death, remembering especially those we name now. Let them be united in Christ's death and raised into his glory. We have trusted in you, O God. We have said you are our God. Gracious God, your Son Jesus endured mockery, pain, and death in order to reveal to us your power that overcomes evil with love and brings life out of death. 
Guide and guard us in this earthly pilgrimage that we may gladly share in his passion and be raised with him into your glory. Who so with the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Passing the offering plate once again that we haven't done in so long that you remember if you did it, you pass it. <laughs> and that church will bring it back up. And we also will be using the full rail for communion today. <coughs> there will not be a brown bag theology class this Tuesday, but there will be Tom on Tuesday and Thursday at 7. And at 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, there will be a morning prayer here in the library. Now, as you know, we are entering Holy Week. <laughs> and um, so Thursday at 7 p.m., we have our Monday Thursday service. Uh, this year, we will be washing hands and feet, either which, whichever one you choose, uh, during the service. So please come. And Good Friday, we'll, we'll, our service will be at 7 p.m. on Friday. Then one, we have one service on Easter, that's at 10.30. And I hope to see you there. Now right after this service today, there is a reception in the parish hall to open our new exhibit called the Homecoming Exhibit, which has items that people have brought from home that are precious to them, mainly quilts, family quilts, and some baskets and so So please, after the service, make your way briefly into the parish hall for that. If you have yet to um, sign up names for remembrances for Thanksgiving or to honor those will be honored on uh, Easter Sunday morning. Please uh, fill out these forms, and they should be in the back, and you can leave them here. And if you don't do that, they're online on our emails. You can get them there and just send the names to Lolly, and we will get them and send them under Tuesday. All right, we have some birthdays today. John Cooper, his birthday is today. And Virginia Goodman's is tomorrow, as is Jan Taylor's. And Lucy Steiner has one uh, on the 12th. So we will now pray for them for their birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts, may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm glad to see you. It's a pleasure to have you here today. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Yeah. 